Hello everyone, I'm Monica. Today I'd like to share with you the popular NetConf protocol. What is NetConf? NetConf like the traditional CLI mode and SNMP is a network device management protocol. It provides a mechanism for configuring devices and querying the network configuration and status. Similar to SNMP that uses MIP files to model data, NetConf uses YAM to describe the interaction models between the NetConf client and server. So why do we use NetConf and YAM? As we all know, one of the key network requirements of the cloud era is network automation, which includes quick, automatic, and on-demand service provisioning and automatic O&M. The traditional CLI mode and SNMP do not meet the requirements of cloud-based networks due to the following disadvantage. The traditional CLI mode is based on main machine interfaces. The configuration is complex and the costs of manual learning, configuration and maintenance are high. In addition, the device configuration varies with vendors and device interworking is difficult. For example, after a user raises a requirement, associated engineers need to break down the requirement into specific functions. To perform configuration, a beginner needs to read the corresponding menu to know whether the functions and command formats of different vendors are different, and whether there are configuration restrictions and dependency. After the learning process is complete, the beginner needs to manually enter commands that can be identified by the device one by one. The entire process focuses on the device and functions. Therefore, the CLI mode is not suitable for large-scale automatic deployment. In NetConf and YAN scenarios, the corresponding application focuses on the definition differences between devices of different vendors. Engineers do not need to pay attention to the definitions of YAN models and the differences between the YAN models. In this way, the focus is shifted from device and function differences to user requirements. The engineers can perform automatic configuration only by operating the graphical application. In addition, the SNMP configuration efficiency is low and the transaction mechanism is not supported. There are not a large number of MIP objects supporting the right operation. Therefore, SNMP is often used for monitoring. Next, let's see the main features and implementation principles of NetConf. NetConf uses the CS communication mode. Generally, an NMS controller or application functions as a client, and a network device such as a router or switch functions as a server. The same YAN model exists on the client and server. Based on the same YAN model, the client generates XML packets that comply with NetConf communication requirements and the server identifies the XML packets and performs related operations to achieve communication. NetConf uses a hierarchical protocol framework, including the content layer, operations layer, messages layer, and secure transport layer. The content layer defines data models, such as YAN models. At this layer, configuration, status, and statistics are isolated. You can query each type of information separately and perform batch operations. The configuration and query speed is faster than that of SNMP. The operations layer defines a series of basic protocol operations that can be invoked using the RPC method. It supports transaction and rollback mechanisms. Therefore, configuration can be performed in different phases and be interrupted or rolled back in the case of a failure. The messages layer provides a simple and independent transmission mechanism for RPC and notifications. The transport layer provides a communication channel between the client and server, supporting authentication, encryption, and integrity check. 
NetConf supports classified data storage and migration, involving running, candidate, and startup configuration data stores. The running configuration data store stores the complete set of active configurations of a network device. The candidate configuration data store stores various configuration data to be committed to the running configuration data store. Changes in the candidate configuration data store do not directly affect the involved device. The startup configuration data store stores configuration data loaded during device startup. The configuration data can be considered a saved configuration file. Configuration data is isolated between the data stores and can also be migrated between the data stores through different operations. NetConf defines abandoned operation interfaces and supports extension based on capability sets. With these operation interfaces, NetConf can perform various operations on devices to meet requirements in different usage scenarios. Now let's use the typical two-phase configuration example to see the basic NetConf session process. Assuming that a user wants to configure an IP address for device interface through the client, after the SSH connection, authentication, and authorization are complete. The first step is to initiate NetConf session establishment on the client and to advertise capabilities through hello messages. Second, after capability negotiation succeeds, the client needs to request to lock the running configuration data store so that its operations will not be affected by other clients. The third step is to copy the data in the running configuration data store to the candidate configuration data store to ensure that the configurations are the latest. The fourth step is to edit configurations in the candidate configuration data store. The fifth step is to commit configurations in the candidate configuration data store to the running configuration data store. The sixth step is to unlock the running configuration data store. Finally, terminate the NetConf session and tear down the SSH connection. In this simple two-phase configuration example, the IP address of the device interface is changed successfully through SML request and reply packets. In this simple two-phase configuration example, the IP address of the device interface is changed successfully through XML request and reply packets. So that's all for this course. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.